This is in response to Billy's Talking Points memo from uh, Tuesday, April 28th, 2015. Uh, who are the big losers in Baltimore or something like that? Um, or as I would like to say <laughs> for Billy, when in doubt, blame the blacks. Because that's exactly what you did, Billy. You, you, you want to make the whole thing on, it's not, and it's not the white people's fault, it's not the institutional racism fault, it's not the police aggression fault, it's the blacks' fault. It's their fault, and I'm gonna tell you why it's their fault. Look at Obama, it's his fault. Look at the, the mayor of, uh, of Baltimore, she's black. Look at the mayor, excuse me, the uh, police uh, chief, he's black. Uh, it's a majority on the black city council. Uh, the, the population of Baltimore is predominantly black, 63%. Uh, the police force is almost 40, 40, 40% uh, black. Uh, so, you know, who do we have to blame for this, for these problems? Well, we have to blame the black people, of course. And to me, this is like the most egregious thing that you could do, Billy, is when there's a time, there, this is a true time when we should be actually t looking back and reflecting, not just on the violence, but what led up to the violence, not just on the police uh, brutality, but what led to that type of police brutality where that type of thing is acceptable, so that there could be a whole rearrangement uh, in the structure. I realize it will take a long, long time, but this is the time that we should be really reflecting on that. But no, Billy, you just go out there and the best thing you can come up with is it's personal responsibility, it's personal behavior, and there's nothing that the government can do, there's nothing that the bureaucracy can do, so let's blame the blacks. And of course you need to reinforce that you want to blame the blacks because you want to talk about 90% of the murders that are committed in uh, in uh, Baltimore are committed, uh, the murderers, the people who are charged with murder are blacks. 90% of the people who are murdered in Baltimore are blacks. 90% of the robberies committed in Baltimore are committed by blacks. But again, only 68% of the population, you know. But that doesn't talk about extreme poverty and that no one has a job. That's why drugs can become very, very prevalent in places like that. And as I mentioned yesterday, when you have thousands of abandoned buildings all over over the place, which was aptly pointed out in the TV show, The Wire. <laughs> Remember when they had to re-up? <laughs> but when you have all of that coming into place, when you're talking about extreme poverty, low uh, education levels, uh, again, extremely few job opportunities for a lot of these people. That's when these things, that's what, when the seeds of these types of things take hold. But I understand it's most important for you and for your white audience who are mostly over 72, to blame the blacks and to blame them. So again, all the things that I just mentioned, city council, police chief of police, mayor, Obama, they're all black. The population of Baltimore, black, uh, majority black. Um, murders, most of the murders that are committed are committed by black. People who are victims of homicide, they're black. People with robbery, they're black. <laughs> See, blame the blacks. Don't blame anything else, just blame the blacks. And it's all related to personal, personal behavior. So if you grow up uh, in, in, um, in the inner city of Baltimore where there's plenty of lead paint still around, there have been, that's why Gray got an original some money back in 2008 because they ate lead paint. All that was supposed to have been taken care of. I remember in back in the early 70s, you know, when I was just, uh, I don't want to say becoming of age, but I was living in a city that was having some trouble with that, where some parents were moving to, uh, you know, moving back towards the, uh, the inner suburbs and the inner cities, and they were fixing up these houses, and of course, you know, painted, peeled in some places before they get to it, their little kids ate it and, and had problems. Yeah, I remember that. Uh, but. So you have all of these inherent problems. You have extreme poverty, uh, you have <clears throat> a terrible education system, you have no jobs, and, <laughs> and how, how is a young person, five years old, six years old, seeing what they're seeing out there, how is it that their personal behavior is not shaped by what they see out there? Living with it day in and day out, in the heat of the summer, in the cold of the winter. Yeah, and of course, that's all personal behavior. 
that some kid at that age can learn good personal behavior because Billy says they can. <laughs> so I also want to point out that Billy had one line in there <clears throat> about the personal behavior of the police and indicating that there should be a no tolerance policy with the police, you know, but not didn't talk at all about the inherent uh, racism of police going after black people, the, the uh, extreme brutality that we have witnessed, uh, s starting with the, well, it, it, it's obviously been going on for a long time, but the amount that we've seen since the Michael Brown murder, uh, who was the other guy, Dent, uh, the other guy in New York City, uh, then the, the guy down in um, South Carolina, you know, Jack, and of course, Billy, the white people will say, oh, there's just a few bad apples. Yes, there are a few bad apples, but remember there was another incident where a cop shot a, a kid who had a cell phone who got off his bike. The cop said he was scared because it was a, uh, a gun. And of course, he shot the guy kid four times or five times in the back. And as, they're lying, as the kid's lying there on the ground, the other cop comes up and starts going over everything. He says, I got your back. Yeah. So you see, it's, it, it's more than just a few bad apples. It's, it's a whole mentality of the police department. Uh, so there, there's a lot of this going on. But again, I want to point out that uh, this is a point in time, you know, how, how does Billy, what is Billy's answer to all this? Oh, you got to pull yourself up by the bootstraps and you got to be a good person? You know, when poverty and crime and uh, no, no education, no jobs, and drugs are rampant all over the place, your personal behavior is really going to be affected then. I mean, how are you, how are you going to shape your personal behavior in that type of situation when you're growing up in the inner city of Baltimore, West Baltimore, uh, East Baltimore? Uh, how is that going to happen? You know, please tell me, Billy. You know, this is a point in time where we need government intervention. This is where we need good policies, and uh, uh, I, I, want, I don't want to use the, radi the term radical, but we need we need a very strong departure from what is now the status quo. We need to go back to uh, types of things that we know that will work, which is we need to increase funding for education. We need to redo uh, the inner city schools. We need to have exceptional amount of before school and after school activities. We need to have a school lunch program. We need a mentoring program. We need a jobs program. And that jobs program and all of the other stuff that I mentioned needs to be extended, not just for those of school age, but those that are the, 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 those that are young. Because what did I say the other day? That the property rate in, in the area where Mr. Gray passed away is approximately 50% for almost all um, men from that 18 to 64 age bracket. That's an astronomical rate. That has to change. And you know, it's not going to change by Billy uh, 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 blaming the blacks and saying that it's, it's a result of personal behavior and that no government, no bureaucracy can help. It's on them. And I say, no, that's, that time is to stop. That time is to stop now.